In early 1982, a 20-year-old woman named Carol Compton fell in love with an Italian military man. She was so enamored with this man that when he needed to return to Italy, she followed. Carol could not live with her boyfriend while he was serving. So, she got a job as a live-in nanny for the Ricci family in Rome. Everything was fine for a couple of days, until a small religious painting crashed to the floor when Carol passed by it. The Ricci's superstitious maid Rosa witnessed this and made Carol say a prayer to ward off demonic influence. Shortly after, Carol went with the family when they went to their vacation home in the Italian Alps. Two days after arriving, a fire destroyed the entire second floor. Firemen believed the fire was started by faulty wires under the floorboards. Shortly after, there was a small fire in a trash can and another fire in two-year-old Emmanuel's bedroom. Luckily, the young boy wasn't harmed, but after this third fire, the Ricci family became wary of Carol and fired her. July of 1982, Carol got another live-in nanny job with the Tonti family. The family that summer was staying with their grandparents on the island Elba. For some reason, the grandmother instantly disliked Carol as soon as she had arrived. A couple days later, a mattress caught on fire. The family searched for a cause of the fire but couldn't find any. Later that same day, a statue fell when no one was in the room. The next morning, Carol was woken up when a silver cake stand crashed to the floor in her room. A few minutes later, a blue glass vase fell to the floor and shattered. Yet again, no one was in the room. After these incidents, the grandmother began to call Carol a witch behind her back. The strange activity continued. Carol began to hear scratching and crackling noises throughout the house. But she could never pinpoint exactly where they were coming from. One night, shortly after the children were put to bed, a fire started on the mattress of three-year-old Agnes. Luckily, the little girl was rescued before she was harmed. This was the last straw for the grandmother. She convinced the rest of the family that it was a good idea to now call the police. The police opened an investigation and contacted the Ricci family. They found out about all the fires that had happened at their vacation home. Carol was then arrested for attempted murder. Since they couldn't tell how any of the fires were started, police theorized that Carol started them via witchcraft. Newspapers all over Europe ran with the story with headlines like, The Girl They Call a Witch. Once Carol's boyfriend, Marco, heard about what happened, he dumped her. Paranormal experts Guy Lyon Playfair and Dr. Hugh Pincott wished to help. They contacted Carol's lawyer and told him they could testify that the strange happenings was due to a poltergeist and not witchcraft. Carol declined both of the experts' help because she wanted to avoid the idea that anything paranormal had happened, and that she was the cause of the fires, even if it was subconsciously. Carol spent 16 months in prison before she went to trial. When in the courtroom, Carol was kept behind iron bars. Experts testified that the fires weren't started by a naked flame, but intense heat. One expert also testified that one mattress seemed to burn downwards, defying gravity. On the third day of the trial, a faith healer 
who was dressed all in black and wielding a crucifix, ran out of the public gallery. She then tried to perform an exorcism on Carol. The woman was stopped and escorted out of the courthouse by armed guards. The faith healer later said that Carol and her mother was possessed by the spirit of an 18th century witch. When the trial was over, Carol was convicted on two counts of arson and one count of attempted arson, but not attempted murder. She was then sentenced to two years in prison. Since she had already spent a year and a half in prison, the court suspended her sentence. Carol was then released and immediately left the country. Carol laid low until 1990 when she wrote a book about her ordeal called Superstition, the true story of the nanny they called a witch. She now lives in West Yorkshire with her husband and children. I personally believe that much of what happened was due to a poltergeist created by Carol subconsciously, and that she was just as much of a victim, maybe more, as the two families. Not all of the mysterious events could be due to the poltergeist. Objects falling could be because of small tremors, and some of the fires could have been started by faulty wiring. The house next door to the Ricci vacation home had shortly before had a fire too. The taunty grandmother had a dangerous habit of leaving smoldering cigarettes near furniture. Back in the 80s, firemen and experts were not trained like they are today, so they couldn't properly identify fire patterns and how they were started. Another interesting thing, the Taunty family had right before Carol employed another Scottish livid nanny named Teresa Hunter. She said that the Taunty family mistreated her and seemed to resent her being there. After just 15 days, Teresa had quit. Do you agree with me or do you disagree? Let me know down in the comments. Do not forget to leave a like and subscribe if you have enjoyed this video. And if you already have, thank you very much. La, 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 la.